decide every mistake is an opportunity. What were the unwritten rules in the past? that nobody talks about but that we all know and like kind of like we wink at each other like we know that one well things have changed and it all started really back with this guy does anybody remember reading the book the tipping point I love this book the tip wasn't it a great book and he talks about tipping point people and he says that they have agent qualities agent that, that might be where we heard the word uh, maybe realtor agent or a sales agent so these are agent qualities and the reality of it is is these agent qualities happen to be the unwritten rules. Some of you, you may be starting the next chapter of your life. You may be opening a business. You may be doing something besides working here, or you may be reinventing yourself, but these unwritten rules are things that you need to understand, and they're not really hard to do. It's 2015. How many of you remember Y2K? I mean, I'm laughing. Remember we were like, oh my gosh, I don't know what's gonna happen at midnight. I have no idea what's gonna go on. We were like, oh. and then at 12, 12.01, we went, oh, nothing. It's 12.05, remember? But if you think that was 15 years ago, Y2K was 15 years ago, think of the changes that have gone on in the world in 15 years. People tell me, you know what, I, I hate change. And the first thing I say is, well, do you have an iPhone? Or do you have, a, yeah, I do. Well, if you have an iPhone, if you think about it, in 2001, just in 2001, Steve Jobs came on the scene. He came on the scene and he said, imagine, in that cute turtleneck and those jeans, <laughs> Imagine a thousand tunes in your pocket, and I'm thinking, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Who the heck knows a thousand songs? <laughs> but Hannah is about giving you permission. We feel guilty all the time. Now women call me up, they go, I'm having a Hannah weekend. One day I was at Kroger's in my neighborhood and I walked by someone who looked just like me and she looked at me and she went, Hannah Day, and I went, mm-hmm. When we name it and give ourselves permission, it becomes much more doable. Let's see, stand up, Gen X. I gotta see where the creativity is. This is a generation who loves, yes. This is a generation, baby boomers said, don't look. I'm going, don't, don't look at my paper. I'm gonna copyright all my work, I'm gonna trademark it, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put gates around my community, and Gen X comes in the scene and says, we're gonna give it away. We're gonna give it away, and they made mixtapes of their favorite music. They pushed, they pushed the tape recorder up against the radio back in 1978, and they waited for the DJ to stop talking, right? <laughs> Cry. Crying makes us uncomfortable. I know you're feeling bad. I don't know. I want to cry. I want to cry for you, but not at work. <laughs> we'll go cry in the closet together, right? Because crying helps you relieve your emotions. But what does it do to the receiver? It makes us uncomfortable. I don't know where Susan Boyle is right now, but this has helped me. What are you waiting for? She waited till she was 47 years old. So how did she show up? She didn't think about it, but she just showed up. <laughs> and usually I would say preparation should have been a little bit better, but she, her talent, her talent was so tremendous that she made the naysayers open their eyes. You're family oriented, you're community oriented, you're employee oriented, you must keep that brand and you must live it every day because that consistency grows the brand. So your behaviors at work have to really, really exemplify that brand identity. You have to show love. Oprah taught us this. How many of you remember Oprah talking about gratitude? Yeah, we're going all the way back to Oprah days, gratitude. But Oprah said have an attitude of gratitude. They said that doesn't work. Just walking around going, I have an attitude of gratitude. <laughs> it doesn't work. You have to have a ritual. You've got to have something every day that taps you on the shoulder and says, what was good about yesterday? Or what was good about today? And I'm gonna to give you that ritual in just a minute. You're gonna thank me because you will all do this because you do it every day. So we have to have some sort of a ritual that takes us back and looks at work 
especially when people are getting tired of work, when they're getting burned out with work, when they say, I can't take it anymore, and we start to be grateful for the people at work, for the people that we've met. And that attitude of gratitude is about people. It's about thinking about who made your day yesterday and thinking about it. Now, if you read more and more, some people say write a thank you note. That might be too much for you in the beginning to sit down and actually write them a note. But at least as we get our minds thinking about gratitude, what starts to happen is when we do it for a month, all of a sudden we're seeing what people do right. We're seeing why work works. We're seeing why we're happy. We're beginning to see the world with really different lenses. <laughs>